We were just talking about the lateral condyle, so luckily I have a case. This was a five-year male child and this was the X-ray taken in 2013. This was uh, not uh, taken in my hospital, this was uh, outside and you can see that uh, there is an obvious appearance like a dislocated elbow plus additional there is a fracture at the lower end of radius. But let's forget about that lower end of radius, we'll concentrate on this. So there are what uh, one should think when you see uh, this kind of an X-ray. Can you throw First some thing light? I want to do is get a little bit more clarity because you know just dislocation in children are rare. Most of the time they are associated with some fracture either in medial epicondyle or radial head or lateral, lateral condyle. These are the three structures which fracture along with a dislocated elbow. Uh, what I would do is uh, if I would take a traction view uh, in a radiology department, simple. You know, this the, uh, if the child is very painful, it may not be possible, but I would take a traction view or I would reduce it first and then have a look at the anatomy better. Third option is to do a CT scan before reduction. So these are three options we have. Uh, okay, because I was not uh, the treating surgeon at that time, this was what was done and you can see this first x-ray was from 29th of November 13 and this is from 5th of December. The first treating surgeon did reduction and he took this kind of an x-ray and he told the patient that everything is fine. So what this shows is radial radius is in line with the capitulum but you know there seems to be disparity between the capitulum and the rest of the humerus. So this could be a associated so, lateral condyle fracture or a facial separation to, to, to possible. See the basic problem that I would like to highlight is the first x-ray as well as the second x-ray, none of the x-rays are taken in proper AP and lateral views. Many a times the children are in so much of pain and they are so uncooperative that it becomes difficult to take proper x-rays. But one should make all the efforts to have proper AP and lateral. Now this x-ray also, it is very difficult to comment whether it is a AP or lateral. So one more pro problem would be when you do a reduction, you have CAM available. And somebody should have taken some CAM shoot, whoever was treating. Possibly this was done in a setup where you yeah, know, CAM think, was not uh, available. Yeah, you know, I some think it was, was done in periphery. Right. So this was the second picture. Then this was the picture taken in 2014, that is about uh, two months or six weeks after the uh, injury and now it starts showing that there is a fracture of the lateral condyle. So now ask Chintan, now, now six weeks, this is the position, now, what is your evaluation and what would you do at that time, six weeks following injury? So uh, <coughs> six weeks following the injury. Uh, uh, if, there, if there's a displaced lateral condyle, it has to be fixed because it is still uh, uh, it will be going into non-union. Will you be able to do it? Do a close reduction and I, for this case, I would like to open, open it open. and see the articular surface uh, reduction also. When I'm and, and what it. would you fix it with quickly? Uh, so there's a good metaphyseal chunk, so, so a, screw. a screw on the metaphyseal side. Absolutely. And uh, probably a horizontal wire to keep the articular reduction yeah. going on and in the medial side. So always there is a difference between what should have been done or could have been done and what was actually done. Yeah. So yeah. please show us what was done. So this was uh, taken to another surgeon and he decided to accept what was there. So this is now picture in 2015, that is at the end of two years. And many times this happens because non-union lateral condyle fracture will have surprisingly good range of movement and yes. no pain. And, and many times people tend to accept that. Why did patient come after two years, you know, after not taking any treatment? Well, actually I saw it still little later. This Please is the x-ray taken outside. I saw it after completion of two years. This was the first time that I saw the patient. 
and the patient was brought for the deformity, vulgus deformity. So okay. this was the picture that uh, this is a lateral view and I have taken uh, a comparison of the normal and uh, this was the AP view. Here also you can see that uh, the uh, elbow is going in valgus. There was no tardy ulnar no palsy, but then the parents were concerned about the uh, increasing deformity. So that's the time that uh, I saw the patient. Right. So, so all of us can see that it's overriding of fragments, and that is what gives rise to progressive valgus deformity. It's not the facial arrest. No. The physis is well open, but it's the you know instability on the lateral side which gives rise to this deformity. Was there tardy nerve palsy? No. No. There what was did you no do? Tardy so, no, no. So Swapnil, what would you do? So, Swapnil uh, is on panel. If you were to manage this, yeah. would you open reduce this fragment? Yeah, definitely. Fix it? Definitely would like to open and... Uh, so this is now two years post-surgery? Two, two, two years. Two years post-injury. Post yes. So would like to uh, definitely open it and uh, fix it, the clearing the... Uh, fracture uh, edges and uh, with osteosynthesis with may require a screw and plate. So I want to ask other panelists, Harshad, do you all agree with I Swapnil? I have a different or? opinion on this. At two years with good range of motion and no ulna no palsy, I would leave that non-union alone. I would just correct the, the valgus deformity with an osteotomy. I am sure she will maintain or he will maintain the range of motion right. without having instability. That would be my method of treatment. So problem with fixing at that stage, two years, is that you will definitely make that fragment avascular. You will cause the bone to unite at the cost of elbow movements and having pain. And, the, and a wiser thing to do is just ignore the non-union and do an osteotomy to yeah. correct the deformity. So we had learned from people like Taral and Sandeep that uh, you shouldn't touch them for the f union of the fracture, non-union. and. That is what I did. So I any just technical did a details are of the, the surgery. We see that you have not just corrected the angulation, but also translated the proximal fragment. Yeah. See, I did a close wedge uh, varus osteotomy, corrected and used a semi tubular or one third tubular plate, which could be easily contoured. Initially, stabilized the fragment with one K wire after doing the uh, osteotomy and then put the screws uh, into the proximal and distal fragment. So would and you fix that fragment in C2 without mobilizing it, without dissecting it? Uh, so that's which, a concept now. Which yeah. fragment? Harshad. Yeah. This fragment. Uh, la uh, no, close lateral the osteotomy and I did not touch at all. Okay. Medial side. So changing the axial alignment of the humerus with the forearm. So okay. here you need to translate that distal fragment in line with the humerus rather than right. just doing an osteotomy. So that's where the milch osteotomy I think works much better. It's a self-stabilizing osteotomy because you're using the bony fragments to stabilize the distal fragment. You don't need as much fixation. So I would do a, a translation milch so, osteotomy. So we'll show you how Varshat has treated a similar case. So osteotomy, the, the message here is osteotomy works. One more additional concept nowadays is you try and put a K wire across this fragment and after putting that K wire, if elbow movement is still intact, you know, uh, the, the trend nowadays is to pass a screw and a small bone graft and also fuse this. The reason is the common extensor origin is attached to this fragment. You know, this is the origin where the the wrist is extended and these children, if it's a dominant hand, for writing papers for three hours, they will constantly need to keep wrist in extension. And you know, they sometimes have pain or fatigue if you don't fix it. So if this fragment uh, can be fixed and if it doesn't jeopardize the elbow movement, if there is no mobility at that fragment, it is better to put additional screw and little bone graft and fix that. That's just the latest concept. Harshad, just come over quickly and uh, no, I'll just yeah, please show, show the follow-up yeah. of this patient. And I saw this child in the last month. The child was brought for him, removal of implant. This was almost after the eight years gap. 
the entire plate was covered with bone and uh, the parents still insisted so we had to actually take out the implant. The child has got full range of movements and this is the uh, picture. So Thank one you. question was why did they choose to remove implant after eight years? Uh, I'll Sometimes, you know, they just say, we don't want this foreign body inside, you take it out. I think I would do a genetic test for, you know, treating everything late. The non-union they treated late yes. and the implant removal also, they've come pretty late uh, to do that. But fantastic result and a big round of applause to Dr. Uh, Kakatkar here.